Hey y'all, so in this video we will be discussing the calorimetry lab. So once again, you will be entering your 1105 Blackboard site and then enter lab material. And then we have lab eight, which I know I've said calorimetry. <laughs> the um, proper actual name of this lab on achieve is enthalpy change of a chemical reaction but calorimetry is the technique we are using so that's why i mentioned that um so i open up my background my procedures my lab assignment of course there's an extra optional video here that would help you if you needed some more background information but here is the background that they give you and what we're doing is measuring enthalpy changes of a chemical reaction. So we have a very specific uh, instrument and we are completing a very specific technique. So the instrument is calorimeter, the, a, chem a calorimeter, and then the technique is calorimetry. And all it really is is an insulated instrument that doesn't let any heat out. So you've been learning about heat and energy and how it can, you know, be transferred from the system to the surroundings. And when you don't have a closed environment or a completely insulated environment, it can be transferred very easily from your system to your surroundings. So here, what we have is a calor calorimeter. It's completely insulated. It won't let the heat out. So you can accurately measure um, any changes, any enthalpy changes. So here's some background and some review on how to describe terms related to enthalpy. So we know enthalpy is the delta H and it's measured in kilojoules per mole. And then whenever you have an absorption of energy, you will have an endothermic. You can describe this reaction as endothermic versus the opposite when you have heat given off or release of energy it's exothermic so like i mentioned calorimetry is a technique and we do it with a calorimeter it has a constant pressure and it allows us to measure the heat flow so what are we doing so i don't want to get too much into these equations up here but essentially what this is telling you heat is not um, in the same way that atoms don't just disappear into nothing heat and energy doesn't disappear into nothing they're simply transferred they're simply moved around so heat of reaction heat of solution heat of your calorimeter is equal to zero when you add this up because overall what happens is it's just transferred around it's not really lost anywhere the net is zero so and if you were to move this equation around you would see the q of your reaction equals minus solution minus q solution minus q calorimeter and then we can further rearrange this around so that's why i said i didn't want to get too much into those but this is your this is your bread and butter here this is your very important <laughs> equation v i e very important equation so your q of your reaction is equal to your mcat equation negative mcat and then your c cal and delta t now what is this big c so you'll see that right here all of these terms are explained so don't worry if you know i'm talking fast or anything m is your mass of your solution c is your specific heat which is Yes, right here. <laughs> I was like, I know I saw this. So the for, for our particular solution, what we're using is a specific heat of water. Okay, so we're replacing it with that because it's pretty dilute. So it's 4.184 joules per grams times degrees Celsius. And then your 
delta T is your final temperature minus your initial. And then this term right here, this is a new term that you may have not seen or may not be too familiar with it, but all it is is a calorimeter constant for the calorimeter. It's a very specific value. That's all it really is. And it's given to you right here. So don't worry about like having to calculate that. It's 5.39 joules over degrees Celsius. And then this term is exactly the same as that one. So it means the exact same thing. So this is how you get the enthalpy change, the enthalpy or the heat re directly related to the reaction that you are going to complete. Okay. Now the enthalpy of the reaction, which it just has a specific, a specific definition related to pressure, but it has to do with heat and specifically it's per mole. So it's the heat divided by moles. Notice that it is in kilojoules, so it's in a slightly different unit than all your constants right here. So that's how you would get enthalpy versus just the heat of the reaction. Okay, these are your VIEs, your very important equations. This one right here that I just talked about and this delta H. So keep these in mind. Put a pin on these. So, so what you will be working with is magnesium, solid magnesium, with aqueous hydrochloric acid, and you are going to react them to form magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. You're going to be using a very simple calorimeter, which is actually a coffee cup, um, to measure the temperature change uh, that happens when this reaction occurs and then you're going to use the change in temperature plus all the masses that you measure plus all the values that i mentioned up here your specific heat of water and then this calorimeter constant to uh, calculate the overall enthalpy that's your end goal you want to calculate the enthalpy with which is delta h to get there you have to have your q of reaction which is this right here so that's why i mentioned these are your very important equations so how you, will you actually complete this lab? So there's no um, like multiple experiments. There's only one, but you will be repeating with different amounts. So I wanted to note that for you. And you will be using, once again, um, a balance. You will be using a graduated cylinder. The the usual, you know, the new thing that you're using, the new instrument that you're using that you haven't used before is a calorimeter. And I'll show you how that looks right now. Um, and then some other things I wanted to point out is just using the thermometer and how we connect it to the calorimeter. And finally, remembering to read the meniscus of the graduated cylinder. Other than that, I know you know how to weigh and um, measure masses to the correct amount of sig figs. So I think you're good on that. And just remember, you will be repeating the experiment um, with different amounts of hydrochloric acid. Oh, I'm sorry. With the same amount of hydrochloric acid, but um, on each trial, you will be changing the amount of magnesium. That's what you're changing. Okay. So these are the things I pulled from our materials, containers, and instruments just to show you a few things. Nothing really difficult, honestly. So this is your calorimeter. So notice it is literally a little coffee cup. Um, it's two little styrofoam cups put together. It really insulates that way and then it has a, a top on it. So you can't really do much with it. You can't look inside because it has to be closed. So that's pretty much that. But the good thing is we have this thermometer that we can bring over and it measures the temperature inside. So that's the good thing. Remember, we're measuring in Celsius. So if it was in Fahrenheit, just like mine was, just change it. You just click on it and it changes the unit. And then finally, the last thing I wanted to mention to you is remembering to read at the meniscus. And to do that, you double click on your gradu graduated cylinder 
just to make sure that you add the correct amount of hydrochloric acid. Your magnesium is a solid, and then your hydrochloric acid is a solution. So keep that in mind. Um, you also have your balance that you're going to need, of course, um, and those materials. Other than that, not too difficult here. You're mostly taking temperature readings, keep that in mind, and mass readings, okay? Those two readings are the most important. So again, make sure to properly record everything that you happen to measure, temperatures to the correct amount of sig figs, which is, this has up to one decimal point for precision. And then for the scales, uh, we have up to three sig figs for the precision, okay? Or, sorry, <laughs> three decimal places for the precision. So make sure to properly document all of those measurements. And then finally, we get to our deliverable, which is our lab assignment. So uh, remember good note taking while you're doing your lab and also probably previewing this assignment is very helpful. Once you get to this lab assignment portion, you'll notice it's a lot of mass measurements it's asking about and temperature measurements, like I mentioned. So uh, keep that in mind. And then remember, I mentioned moles. And that was when we were discussing the enthalpy. So moles are important here. And this is why it's relevant, okay? So don't think it's just coming out of nowhere. There's a reason for calculating moles in each trial. And the moles you will be calculating will always be for magnesium. Keep that in mind because the amount of hydrochloric acid always stays the same. So that's not what's changing. Okay, so you'll get there. Now I'm gonna show you how to actually calculate heat. So uh, for example, question number eight, you might wanna, you know, maybe, just gloss over and then come back to it. Uh, yeah, the ones that calculate heat, you might want to come back to once you've uh, watched the rest of this video. Okay, so for example, right here. I really like this uh, because you really uh, have all the pieces of inf information that are important. Um, this is all relevant. Okay, so this is your mass of magnesium reacted. Now, the reason this is important is because you will use this to calculate moles. So I would suggest taking notes as you're listening to me. <laughs> so mass of magnesium reacted, you're going to use that to calculate moles. These two right here, final and initial temp, that's how you calculate delta T. You take your final, you subtract away your initial, that gives you your delta T. And then finally, mass of calorimeter and its contents after the reaction. That's what we will be using in our Q. So here is your Q. Or here is the first part <laughs> to getting Q. So mass of contents in the calorimeter after trial one. Keep that in mind. Number of moles of magnesium used in trial one. So these are two different things. But remember, we filled that out over here in question 13. Mag mass of magnesium reacted, you end up, I keep clicking the wrong one, you end up dividing it by your molar mass and it gives you moles. Um, and then this question, delta T, remember, you take your final minus initial, that gives you your delta T. So. Sorry for flipping back and forth, but just want to show you how question 13 has everything you need there for you. And then Q of reaction. So this is where I want to show you uh, what I have done. So on the last lab video, I actually demonstrated step by step, you know, I wrote everything out, but I noticed it was kind of time consuming. That video ended up being like 20 something minutes. So instead today... Um, and let me know if you do have an opinion on wh which way is better, if I already have it set up and just explain it, or if I actually walk you through it. If you do feel called to let me know, feel free um, and let me know what you prefer. But anyway, so we just left 
Question 17, and it told you, calculate the heat of reaction in trial one. Okay, so how are we going to do this? I'm going to show you. Heat of reaction, remember it was that equation I was pointing out, which is Q equals, and then this part, your MCAT with, this, with the negative sign in front, minus big C cal times delta T. So what? where are you getting all of this? So this right here is your mass of your solution after the reaction has happened the mass the contents in in the calorimeter which was on one of those questions and I, i'll stop flipping back and forth right now right here question 14 so notice how this all kind of connects so you need this value and then here and then here it connects to each other okay so that was that c your specific key of your solution is actually of water remember we mentioned that in the background so that's the value you'll be using there and then delta t was that final temperature minus that initial and you have all of those things you wrote them down in question 13 right final minus initial and then this next portion big c cal that was a given that was a constant that we were given in the background and i'm repeating it to you right here 5.39 and then finally your delta t once again will help you calculate that portion so you're going to plug all that in make sure your units are all lining up and everything's canceling out and you're going to end up getting heat in joules and remember there's a negative sign here so don't forget that next to get the heat of reaction which is actually the next question after number 16 where you calculate, sorry, number 18, <laughs> which is actually number 18, you actually calculate delta H. How do you do this? So what you're gonna do is take that Q you just calculated, remember I said everything connects to each other, and you're gonna divide by the number of moles. Now, which moles are we dividing by? You are dividing by the number of moles of magnesium. So you take your mass of magnesium, and remember that was also in question 13. The mass of magnesium, right there, and you ended up calculating it already for question 15. So you have that ready already. I just wanted to show you how to set it up just in case you needed, but it would be that mass divided by the molar mass, and then one mole up here, that gives you moles. So you would take what you already calculated, divided by the moles of magnesium, that gives you your delta H. So all of these problems, they look complicated because, oh my gosh, you, you know, they're asking me to calculate so many things, but they're all connected. So it ends up helping you out because it's kind of taking you step by step. That's really what's happening here. So keep that in mind. Don't be overwhelmed by all the questions. And then some free response questions. So um, that's about all I have for you today. If you have any questions at all, feel free to let me know. And thank you for watching this video.